When I say Karl Lagerfeld, many of us immediately think of the gray ponytailed eccentric man with gloves and dark glasses. This fashion designer was born before the Second World War. The German born designer was not only a fashion designer, but also a talented photographer. He worked with Fendi and houses, or he was the creative director for Chanel. The Lagerfeld brand has about 40 fragrances in the databases. I have some of them in front of me. Let's look at them together, including including the brand new one from 2022, which is sort of a revamp of an old classic, and it is Lagerfeld Classic Grey. Let's look at them together. The 1978 fragrance, Karl Lagerfeld Classic, was to believe, or is believed, to be Al Pacino's fragrance as the character Tony Montana in the movie Scarface. It was this fragrance right here. If you look in the film, there is a scene in there where he sits in the bathtub talking to his wife and his best friend. And the fragrance sits in the far corner and you can see the top of the fragrance in this film. Whether that's actually true or not, no one knows. However, this fragrance definitely was in the movie as you can see in the clip above. This fragrance definitely has a good bit of nostalgia associated with it. It's a powdery tobacco with some jasmine and rose. This is a newer formulation. Obviously, it's not the original from back then. These newer formulations aren't what they used to be, obviously, today, since they've been reformulated quite a bit. But you, when you have this one, you can still see and tell that the sexiness this one yielded back in the 70s and 80s. Really nice fragrance. I wear this one today every now and then just to kind of reminisce of what things used to be. The next one's gonna be Karl Lagerfeld for him, 2015. So this 2015 release, I have to admit right off the get-go, is not going to be one of my favorites. I do like the bottle, however, with the cut-off edges, and it's a nice looking bottle on the shelf. If you look right here, you can actually see that there is Karl Lagerfeld in the image. So this 2015 one is a strange one. It's kind of like, Taking La Nuit de L'Homme with a really big dose of Nautica Voyage and maybe a half a spray of Dior's Fahrenheit. Now this is kind of like all clones and sort of half sprays of all of those. So it's not really, a, you would think that could, that could be a really great fragrance, but I do have to admit this one is not my favorite one from Carl. Sorry to say, but I don't know, this fragrance doesn't really go into a direction that some, that's something that I would like to wear, unfortunately. But you can pick it up for a good price and you know, maybe you like it. If you like this one out there, let me know why you like it and how it develops on you. It's not for me, unfortunately. Now, this is probably the only one that I don't really like out of my collection. So well, the ones I really do like though is a line from Carl called the perfume materials or Le Matier, uh, Perfumes Matier. Currently, there are eight fragrances in this particular line. There's four for women and four for men. The men's starts off with Bois de, which means wood of, and the women's starts off with Fleur de, which means flower of. The first one released was from 2017 in this line, and it is called Bois de Vetiver, or Wood of Vetiver. And I have to say from the get-go, this one right here makes a lot, of, a lot of vetiver lists, and with good reason. It's really amazing that a fragrance that's relatively inexpensive, that's why it makes a lot of lists, can be this good. This one is a minty, fresh aromatic with some green undertones and a hint of rose. Also, the protection on this one is going to be pretty decent, lasts for a few hours. And this is a great fragrance that you could wear in the spring and summer, without a doubt. This is one of the favorite ones out of this collection for me. Bois de Vetiver or Wood of Vetiver. It's a really nice one. You can get this one for a really good price if you look online. Then in 2018, Karl Lagerfeld, the brand launched Bois de Uso. And this one's gonna be a green color. I don't know if you can see that where the other one was sort of a bluish color, the Bois de Vetiver. And I really, like I said, I do like the bottles. So Bois de Uso, when you first smell this one, is going to immediately remind you of another fragrance that was sort of, that popularized the note of Yuzu. And it is L'Odezé pour Homme 
right here. This one, they're very similar, although Boa de Yuzu is not going to be quite as strong as the, uh, the Izemiyake. Of course, Izemiyake is from the 90s, which popularized the note of Yuzu, and this one right here is 2018. It's not going to be quite as pungent, like I said, or as sharp as the Yuzu from Izemiyake. However, it's a beautiful scent, and this is going to have a little bit of ginger in it to kind of soften it out just a little bit. Unfortunately, the projection and the longevity is not going to be as good as the Izemiyake. So if you like the Yuzu note, then the Izemiyake is probably your better choice. However, this one is milder. It's just a tad more elegant. This is definitely a good summer choice, but there's also an alternate one that you can get. Most of these are going to be pretty much for summer or spring. There's only one in here that you could really wear sort of when it gets a little bit cooler outside. The next one is going to be Bois de Cedre or Wood of Cedar. This one right here is going to have a citrus and violet opening, and then you're going to have some salty florals with a little bit of musk and amber grease as it dries down. It kind of feels a little bit like a barbershop fragrance with a feel of musky saltiness. It's a really beautiful fragrance for spring and summer, and I actually do enjoy this one because of its sort of soft uniqueness and a hint of sophistication. But you know what this is? This is a great time for you to leave a like if you're getting anything out of this at all. Maybe even subscribe for more fragrance content, as this lets me know that you like what I'm doing and you want me to do more of it. I wanna thank you in advance. Appreciate that you're here and I would love to have you on board. Then in 2001, Karl Lagerfeld came out with Bois de Amber, this one right here. Now I was lucky enough to snatch a little small trial or a tester bottle of this one, always save a little bit of extra money. And who doesn't like that nowadays? Bois de Amber is definitely immediately going to remind you with the sweetness and the amber of like the Dolce & Gabbana's, the one, or the Giorgio Armani Stronger With You, all very amber heavy fragrances. This one is definitely going to be along that line without trying to bend any rules. It has plenty of sort of, it's almost a little bit on the fruity sweet side, with plenty of freshness without trying to bend the rules. It's a really nice one, perfect for like the colder days that are yet to come, fall and early winter. I'm not sure it's going to be quite strong enough to handle like super frost and snow and stuff like that, but leading up to that, it's a nice fragrance if you like the note of amber. But let's move and do a complete 180. We're gonna go backwards and we're gonna look at the sort of remake, the classic gray from Karl Lagerfeld. Why do you have to talk to me like that all the time? So the new release for 2022 for Karl Lagerfeld is going to look just like this. And it comes in a little gray bottle like this or a gray box like this. And obviously what you can tell immediately is that they've gone back and they've brought back the design of the original bottle, which is, I think is kind of cool and kind of reminiscent. What you'll have in this one, it's going to be a, a woody lavender with a good dose of hazelnut. Let's give it a spray while we're at it. And I really like this scent when I first spray it. It kind of takes me back to a version of the 80s in a good way. However, on me, this immediately didn't last very long. It almost turned a little bit generic on my skin. Now, some people are going to love the fact that it's not too out there. It's sort of a beginner gourmand at the very beginning. And the longevity and the, the wearing power is definitely going to be on the shorter side. It's not quite the powerhouse that I would like for it to be. I would like for it to be stronger, in other words. But the scent itself, with sort of the woody, creamy hazelnut, is quite lovely, some, somewhat reminiscent of the 80s. It's an easy wear for a few hours, sort of a beginner gourmand with hazelnut. I do like, however, I like the dry down of this fragrance on the bottle neck. As it dries down on here, it's a little bit different than it is on my skin. Like I said earlier, it turns a little bit generic on my skin. But on the bottleneck, the dry down is way better than it is on my skin. It might just be the composition of my skin. If you have this one, let me know if it's different on your skin. So what I do with this one is I mainly wear this one on the clothes because I know that the fabrics are not going to interact as much with the fragrance as they do on my skin because the dry down is really lovely. But I do like the comeback of the original bottle. Not bad 
from Karl Lagerfeld. But let me know what you think of the choices here. Do you have any of them? Do you enjoy them? Which one's your favorite? I'd love to hear from you. It's good talking to you. I'm glad you were here. Until next time, I want you to take good care of yourself. Always smell nice. And of course, don't forget to love, like, share all those wonderful things that help me grow this channel and give you more content. I want to thank you in advance. Until next time, do take good care of yourself. Always smell nice. And I will talk to you soon.